I have a, an uncle and aunt, both dead now, but they had a big house in Cornwall, big stately home built in 1603. And they were terribly upper class, very uptight, my aunt rather particularly. Um, and so didn't find much humor in modern humor. But Monty Python, we would go up and watch after dinner in their very formal dining room, we'd go and watch Monty Python. And my aunt Diana would be on the floor with tears streaming down her cheeks. She would laugh so much. It's too perilous. We are the knights who say neat. I told them we already got one. So yes, many happy memories of Monty Python. Did you ever think that there would be a time when you were a young guy, when you were a teenager, that you would be doing, you know, theater, no. acting yourself, performing, entertaining? No. I acted all the way through school, but then I thought I should do something sensible and, and became a, I did a law degree at Cambridge thought I'd be a lawyer. Um, but then went back into acting, I went to drama school. And, and you know, one hoped you'd, I'd make a career. I thought I might make a career of it, but I never dreamed I'd end up in America on a soap opera and a sitcom and doing spam. I mean, all of this is just crazy, but you learn in life to just kind of roll with it. This isn't your first go around in a gunkwit with spam a lot. You were here in 2010 right. doing the show. But it sounds like this show is different. Aside from the fact that it's outside, what's different about this show? Um, we've got this extraordinary clever set, big set, and the whole concept behind it to fill the space. Um, so it's, it's a kind of bigger production in a way, even though it's actually smaller or less people, but it's uh, a lot of energy. Set your mind on what to find. And there's nothing you it seems to be madcap and almost improvised, but it isn't. It's like all great comedy. It's incredibly detailed and specific, um, as it was the first time. And I read that Eric Idle actually worked with your director here in yeah. Agunquit to, to sort of reformat. Right. You know, originally it was going to be a narrator saying, oh, and imagine, if you will, a big number right now. You know, we'll sing it, but we can't dance it. That, thank goodness, passed, and we were able to actually deliver more or less the show. When your life seems to drift, when we all need a lift, trim your sail, you won't fail. Find your grail, find your grail. When you're doing Monty Python, there's really not much else like it. It's this right. silliness. I mean, it's brilliantly written, marvelous right. silliness, but at the heart of it, it's just silliness. What's it like to play that kind of material? Well, it's interesting you say that because what surprised me is the play in Spamalot. There's a very, um, a very strong storyline with a real emotion to it. So there's the silliness around it, but the heart, the through line, and that's kind of my job as Arthur, is to tell that through line story that's about this man trying to discover the meaning of Liff <laughs> for him. This is really the first acting job you've had in 16, 17 months? Yeah, kind of. I mean, there was a couple of um, Zoom things, um, and I did do a COVID safe uh, movie that was extraordinary, bizarre, you know, where the actors all had to be sort of separated and you had a box lunch that you ate in the car and everyone was masked until you actually got in front of the camera and then on the countdown you could whip your mask off, do a scene and then whip it back. Uh, but yeah, this is the first time, I think this is pretty much the first production, full-blown production happening in this country like this. And I assume this is the longest, or that was the longest break you had ever had in acting since you became an actor. Yeah. So what is it like to be yeah. back, and especially doing theater, not doing TV or a movie or right. something, but to be doing theater? It's a joy. Find your grave. I mean, theatre is the spiritual home. This is what I love. It's hard work, and I think that took me a bit by surprise. You know, 18 months of um, enforced indolence, sitting on the couch eating potato chips and watching endless Netflix, um, 
didn't prepare me for the physicality of this. You know, it was 10 years ago, that first one I remind you. So it means I'm 10 years older. And there's a certain amount of jumping around in this, but it was just such a joy to get back. I mean, the first time we did it in front of an audience was just such a joyful experience for everyone. The audience was like, you know, thank goodness we can go to theater. And we were like, thank goodness we can do this again. There are all kinds of things that I learned from that conversation, including I hadn't known that he was, had you know, studied to be a lawyer, gotten his law yeah. degree, and had planned to practice law before he got into acting. Very, very different careers there, oh, for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. I, um, I saw Spam a lot in 2010, right. and I loved it. It was actually at a Gunkwit Playhouse. I loved it. He, and he did such a great job. I can see it. I mean, he'd be as King Arthur. I mean, he's got he's got a certain you know gravitas, and he's he's got the, he's got the voice, and he's got the look. I can see how he'd be perfect. But he was also we were both struck by just what an engaging, relaxed, down to earth guy yeah. he was, and how fun it was just to sit and chat with him for twenty minutes. Yeah, even though I was fangirling the entire time, it was totally fine. <laughs> you did rein it in <laughs> really well. I have to commend you, you on that. Thank you. You can see Spam a lot at Agunquit Playhouse through July 10th. There's information about tickets and showtimes on our new Center Main website and mobile app. Yeah, we'll have more of our conversation with Charles Shaughnessy tomorrow on 207. That's where the fangirl comes out a little bit more. He'll talk about why he thinks the nanny connected with audiences around the world and whether he'd have any interest in appearing in a possible nanny on Broadway. And he had an interesting answer to that, so that's tomorrow. <laughs>